Hello, my name is Roshan Narayan, and thank you for joining us on N20. If you're watching us on YouTube, do tell before the session. I was taking. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, do turn on the notification button. And if you're watching us on the Rakya Pios, hello. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, the person on today's show used to represent Malaysia, the Rakya, Sharon Wee. Thank you so much for doing that first and foremost. Thank you for being my friend, Sylvia. We haven't seen each other in a very long time, but it's been 10 years since you retired from the world of squash. So my first question is, what's more nerve-wracking, playing in front of thousands of people, it's match point, or being live on TV as a presenter? First of all, hi Roshan. Thanks for inviting me. It has been a while, yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, my life is all about sports. Uh, um, as a former national squash player, now in broadcasting, which one is more nerve wracking? Uh, in different way, lah. You know, uh, in front playing in front of everybody could be my mom, dad. You know, within the spectators, I guess uh, a lot of pressure to win because it's, <laughs> it's all about winning or losing. But yeah. live on TV, another thing, because you and the camera and millions of people watching you and you want the best. So I guess both also has pressure like, in different way. But I love it. The adrenaline is just fantastic. <laughs> I mean, you're a natural born athlete, uh, Sharon. You're a natural born leader. We will talk about what you're doing currently. Uh, but you've got to tell it, uh, you know, what, like how it is. You're, you're there, you're representing the country. Like I said, you're tra traveling around the world. Is, is the nerves, uh, you know, at times unbearable? How long did it take for you to get used to it? At what age did you get used to it? I started sports since I was six, I guess. You know, I've been trained to take the pressure. <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine that? Then uh, I fall in love in, uh, with squash when I was 11 and represented Malaysia at 13 years old. And after 20 years... Uh, I stopped um, in, at 33 years old. I'm representing Malaysia for 20 years. Uh, well, you know, whether, you know, this uh, pressure can be trained or not, I think it's a process. Um, mm. When you lose, obviously, you cry. Sometimes you just get bad mood. But it's part of process to win uh, for success as well. So I think uh, it's just uh, part of life. And for me... Yeah, I take it one day at a time. And I think as squash player, it has taught me a lot of losing and get up again. And that is why whenever, you know, I get a little bit of taste of success, I always celebrate. And yeah, <laughs> celebrate. Yeah. Makan, I, I, fine. Yeah. I, I celebrate for anything and everything. I wake up in the morning, it's a celebration because you know what? I am trying to lose weight. But I, like you mentioned, you love sports. I love sports. And if you're in the world of sports, you hear that Mike Tyson might be making a comeback. He retired because he was tired. He was he had enough. He was getting punched left, right and center. So as an athlete, how difficult is it for you to go like, okay, it's time to give it up. I've been practicing this since I'm 11 years old. Now I'm 33. In your case, I'm done. How do you go about getting around that point? Well, um, you know, after playing 20 years, I stopped when I was 33, and that's like a decade ago. So I'm younger now, right? Can you calculate? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I'm just joking, yeah. You know, young at heart, yeah. But anyway, um, when when was the time, yeah? You just know, you, you just know about it, you know, like you see... Uh, right here, me playing in America, traveling all around the world, so proud representing Malaysia. And, you know, every day when I train, I rem remember about that young 11 years old Kampung Melaka girl who wants to achieve her dream and do the very best for the family, friends, and of course for Malaysia. And Sometimes, you know, your body, after training so much, day in, day out, a lot of sacrifice, you miss uh, birthday parties, you miss hang up time with friends. And end of the day, it's just, you just knew it. When your body feels a bit tired, especially mentally, and when you are thinking about what's next for the future, I think that's, I think about time. And one more thing, if when you play tournaments as a professional or competitive athletes when you go in and you feel like well today i just want to play for fun lah then you know it's time to stop 
<laughs> because as a pro athlete, when you go in on court, I mean, like me as a squash player, it's no fun. I mean, you can be, you can enjoy the tournament, the competitiveness, but you go in to win, nothing else. Yeah, so that's basically like, I mean, in football, it's like you go to training and you're just going through the motions. You're not there 100% to be the best during training. So you're definitely not going to be best uh, when you're playing the game. But something which a lot of people might not know about you is that you had a really bad accident many, many years ago. And you mentioned this before. Squash helped you get your mind straight. If it's not too much to ask, could you share that that moment, that accident that happened to you? Yeah, I don't tell this incident to many. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, Sharon. You know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm using the friend card. It's like Uno. Don't hit I reverse. Know. Yeah, Just yeah. Just go with the story. But I mean, if you don't mind me sharing. Oh well, yeah, that's sure. Fine. I mean, that's um, I should say the turning point, the biggest turning point of my life when I was 18 years old after SPM. I was riding my back, uh, my bike actually, motorcycle after late night training uh, in Ujong Pasi, going back home. Um, I think I trained very, very hard and I was too tired and I fainted while riding my bike and I went to the lamppost at a very high speed and yeah, I had um, internal injury, I ruptured my spleen, half of my pancreas, injured here and there, crack um, my cheekbone and you know what, I appreciate Malaysia, I appreciate a lot of things in life and believe in unity. You know why? There was this young Malay boy, Kampung boy, Anwar, who came and saved me, sent me to hospital. Because it was dark, that road, and no one else was helping. That's what she, he said, and I trust him. Because when I opened my eyes, I was looking at white, uh, you know? Light, yeah. Yeah, and it's, I, I, I was in the hospital. So it was a tough time for me because I had internal bleeding. It was very serious. I had about five hours surgery. And I still have uh, my scar, about 30 centimeter scar here on my stomach. So that reminds me every day that every day is special. Because, um, yeah, um, so God, true. people, especially Anwar saved me. And that gave me a lot of hope about life that, you know, I appreciate day by day. And that's why, you know, whatever I do now, it's all about giving back, be kind, and do my best in life and be proud of myself. I think uh, as a friend, I'm, I'm very proud of, uh, you know, how you have accomplished so much uh, in your TV career uh, over the past uh, decade or so. And Anwar, if you're watching, thank you so much. You just saved a friend. I, I would never have met you, Sharon, if not for Anwar. So Anwar, wherever you are, God bless you, my friend. But what was the recovery process like uh, after that sur surgery? Because you've come back, you've gone back into squash and you played for a good, my maths is horrible, uh, one plus one is seven for me. You would have played for another 12 years after this accident, if I'm correct. Yeah, um, you know what? Doctor said, Sharon, I think you should stop squash. And it, it was a very serious injury. Of course, mom, dad was very, very worried about me. And I remember, at that time, I was actually training for my very first SEA Games and uh, SEA Games in Chiang Mai, Thailand, I remember. And I wasn't qualified yet. I was training to go for the trial to be one player of the team to go to SEA Games. And if I were selected, that would be my first SEA Games. And here I am, you know, I had the injury and internal bleeding. I had my scar. But that's crazy, you know. Um, I went into the hospital for a month, came back, and I told my mom, you know what, I'm going to do my best to qualify for the SEA Games no matter no matter what. So I started to walk after two, two months slowly because wow. the sea was still there. And slowly, you know, when the doctor took out the stitches, I started to run very slowly. Then started to go to the squash court, have a hit alone. Um, after five months, uh, I went to KL. From Laka, I went to KL for the trial. And mm. I won. So I was part of the team. Even 
until today, I didn't even tell my mom that during the trial, during the tournament, I was still feeling a bit pain on my stomach. But that's because of my dream. I want to continue to be the best player in Malaysia. I want to represent Malaysia in my very first SEA Games. And the rest of history. Yeah, I just went for it, appreciate every moment and opportunity of my life. Just hearing that, Sharon, I know what the W in we stands for. It's warrior. I'm never going to complain about a, a chip nail or an accidental scratch on my face ever again after a person such as yourself who's literally suffered a, a career-ending surgery, has gone into a competition and played. No more crying about, you know, Care Bears and cartoons that make me cry like Frozen 2. I hate Frozen 1, by the way. It's a horrible movie. What's horrible as well at times is the fact that you hear about certain state of affairs when it comes to sports in Malaysia. Not everything is picture perfect. Not everything is going to be 100%. But it is always about getting things right, getting the fundamentals right, the foundation correct. So in your time, uh, in the world of squash in Malaysia, how has it improved? Well, squash has always been a popular sport, you know, and it's a very affordable sport. And I myself uh, started as a school girl and I had a simple equipment, squash, racket, balls, shoes. And I went on to be national number one, world number 18, had five uh, sea games and um, three Asian games, four Commonwealth, ga uh, four Commonwealth games, and many, many world championships. And I should say that, you know, squash has grown a lot since Commonwealth Games 1998. And I still remember that moment that um, I can't, that, that will be one of my best memories. Mm. Being part of the contingent with my Baju Kurung, with other Malaysian athletes. And when they announced Malaysia, that's when you went in to the stadium and you just want to go again and again. There are hundreds of thousands, millions of Malaysian clapping for you. And of course, in the stadium, everybody stand up and, you know, clap for the Malaysian contingent. That's the best moment. And that's when squash just grew so much because, yes, you know, when they say that, hey, squash is a Mat Saleh game, but again, that's when we just believe in ourselves from that yeah. common games itself with a lot of uh, programs, junior programs, and a lot of attachment, overseas attachment, and also send the players for overseas tournament. And when we beat, you know, top players, that's when we like, hey, I know, we are good too. That's when Nicole David comes in, myself, Aslan, Bing He. And now, of course, we won, uh, Siva Sangari, and Yao, Ivan Yuan, and many more. So we are the best in the world, and especially in Asia. Yeah, I mean, we just spoke uh, to We Won a couple of weeks ago. She was on the show. She was talking about her injury crisis and how she overcame it. You know, We Won, if you're watching, you know, thank you for representing Malaysia as well. But you mentioned uh, Dato Nicole David. I always say this to all my friends when I was in my previous job as a presenter for Astro. I used to travel to England a lot and I always used to talk about uh, Dato Nicole David, a person who was world number one for eight years in a sport. Uh, you, everyone talks about, you know, Roger Federer in tennis, you know, fighters who are on their best prime of the years, etc., etc. But eight years as a world number one, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Actually, more than that, eight times world champion and nine years, one month as world number one. Can you imagine that? Yeah. And I'm so proud of her. You know why? Because I've seen her since she was seven, because her sisters, <laughs> uh, Leanne and Cheryl, were about my age and we played together. So yeah. I'm Nicole Senior. That's when we helped each other. We actually Did you shout at her? Did you shout at her? <laughs> hey, Nicole! No? <laughs> no, no, no. More than that, I asked her to wash clothes and wash the clothes, put the clothes in the washing machine. Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh my God, I hope she, I'm going to send this to her. No, no, let me tell you why. Because we were based in Amsterdam together. Yeah. Uh, we, we were housemates, you know, we trained there, we took care of each other. I cook, the big sister cooks and she has to wash the plates. And sometimes we take turns to wash our clothes like, Nicole, it's your turn. And sometimes, you know, Nicole, can you help me this and that? And 
and at that time she was already world number one uh, but still she's uh, such a humble person i really like her and it, she she always see me as her team captain uh, mm. forever <laughs> so i I'm, i really appreciate um, that about her you know being humble work really hard and very talented and i should say that this is when the quality of great sports person Yes, you are talented, but again, if you work really hard, you listen, you are being humble, you are nice and kind, that's when you are in the package. And uh, one more thing to athletes as well, it's not just that. that huh? In On and off court also, I think we have to take care of each other, not just being good in sports, but here as well. Develop right. ourselves in many ways, education and things like that. Well said, Sharon. Now, unfortunately, the show is only 20 minutes. That's why it's called In 20. So before we wrap things up, uh, all those things you use to describe, all those terms you use to describe uh, Dr. Nicole David is the same thing I'll use to describe you because you are a captain. You're a great person. You're a great athlete. You're a great professional. And now you're a leader. Sports uh, and women go on hand in hand. Empowerment as well. All this can be thrown into one package. And you are now leading that front as well, correct? Yes, Roshan. I always believe in empowering women, girls, and youth through sports because it teaches a lot of good characters. And now I'm very involved in women empowerment. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm also uh, the only women lead commentator in Malaysia as well. And I'm very proud of that and hope that there are many more women in broadcasting. Yeah. Um, I'm involved in the Kementerian Belia dan Sukan Women in Sports Initiative. So I've been doing a lot of um, moderating for shows uh, with ISN, MSN, KBS, iLead, IRIS. And as you can see there, my new show, Teroka Tech, under Mari. And nothing yeah. to do with sports, but this is when, you know, my skill in hosting, um, I'll, I use it in different industry. And that's why I think as a sports person, you learn a lot. It's not just about sports, but you use yeah. the good principles in life, a great character and skill for other industry as well. So okay. women empowerment, girls empowerment is extremely important because it's all about giving opportunity to every gender, especially in Malaysia. And I believe that if women and girls, we believe in ourselves, we are confident with ourselves, we'll be leaders just like anyone. And I could say that the best leaders as well because we are not just smart we have eq and also we are very kind person <laughs> and, and and you can be a bit scary because you're the boss i tell you i'm going to send my two daughters when they're old enough to you for some discipline and from some direction uh sharon before we go we're running out of time if somebody wants to uh, work with you or get some advice or you know just tie up with you how do they uh, reach out to you yeah you, they can just um Email me, SharonV0510 at gmail.com or go to my Facebook, SharonV, and my IG, SharonV, number 5, Q-U-A-S-H, and I'll reply anytime. And I'm very open and very flexible. I work well with everybody. So if you need my help, my advice, and anything that we can collaborate, let's do it. Why not, Sharon? It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much uh, for being on the show. I shall talk to you very soon, yeah? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Roshan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. All right, don't forget to catch all the highlights on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. And do turn on uh, the notifications on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who are watching us on the Rakyat Post, Dotashimaste.